Welcome to day 385 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Trassenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in Cloud Fee. So Brian, what's the diamond question of the day? Yeah, so if you answer this question, we'll give you some diamonds, usually three or four to the best answers. Just answer it in the comment section on DSO below this post. Uh, and today's question is, do you want Elon Musk no. to buy Twitter? Wait, is and that is that the question? Didn't, I thought we had a different question today. Wasn't that no, yesterday's the, question? The question is, do you <laughs> want Elon Musk to buy Twitter and would it be good or bad for DSO? And no, this is a different question than yesterday. Do you want him to, I, so I think I want him to buy Twitter and then integrate it with DSO. I, I would say that I either want that to happen or for him to not buy it, maybe the, uh, the uh, shareholders reject his offer, and then he decides to invest the money in his own uh, platform built on the DSO blockchain. Yeah, that, that's probably better. It would probably be better for DSO if he went in that direction, just because all the data is already on Twitter. Yeah, I, I think that is probably a pie in the sky uh, dream, but who knows? You never know. Yeah, so answer that question and get some diamonds. Uh, the nifty investor yesterday on TikTok, uh, he, we talked about him before he created a DSO video. It was uh, a very good promotional video for DSO. He's at it yet again. Yesterday, he made a DSO, another DSO video saying that a decentralized Twitter would look exactly like DSO. Yeah. And, and he, he also pointed out like what the FTX founder said, uh, about like the, what the perfect decentralized, uh, I guess, social media uh, platform would look like. And what he described was basically everything that DSO had, like having like a social token and having the ability to give rewards for posts. So, I mean, DSO is like so ahead of the game and all this, whether it gets the recognition it deserves out of the gate, uh, I guess we'll see. Um, but I think that we're really well positioned uh, and, and I can't see all this like public discussion of decentralized social media more on a macro level hurting DSO. It can only help it. And I think we're in the right place at the right time. We'll see if we can take advantage of it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so uh, DSO did a major overview blog post on DSO.org yesterday, kind of giving an update of, of everything that we've seen in the first quarter of this year. Uh, and what's to come in quarter two, which we're, we just started about ten, about two weeks ago. Uh, I'll just give a brief overview of some of the, some of the points they talk about and some of the things they revealed. Uh, they said that quarter one was the quarter of quiet building, and quarter two will be the quarter of shipping. So all that stuff that they've been building in quarter one is finally going to make its appearance in quarter two. Super exciting. Uh, Hypersync is almost done. Uh, they said that the merge is actually going to take place this weekend. Uh, and it won't go live, though, until the hard fork in May when Dow Dow launches and all that, all the details around, all the other intricacies around Dow Dow come forward in the hard fork. Uh, talking about Dow Dow, they also said that uh, Dow Dow has hit several milestones. Uh, they have 4,700 Discord members now, 3,200 Twitter followers, and they've raised over $1.7 million. And of course, that fluctuates with the DSO price. I think this morning, since DSO went up a little bit, it's about $1.9 million. Uh, they're also beginning to ramp up marketing uh, for DSO. And uh, they're activating paid ads. Uh, and they said that to expect more content marketing uh, social media campaigns and PR pushes moving forward into quarter two. So that's something that we can all look forward to. I know we've seen that a lot with the TikToks and uh, Instagrams, uh, Instagram posts that we've seen kind of linking DSO to what's going on with Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey and all that. Uh, they also said that they're in the process of redoing the DSO.org website. Um, they want to kind of take advantage of marketing funnels and funnel people in the right direction. So we should see a major revamp of DSO.org in the coming, I guess, weeks and months ahead. Um, the various Twitter spaces that they've held over the last quarter, they said each Twitter space had well over a thousand people in them in total. Uh, they've been really uh, successful. They've really kind of help drive people from outside of DSO into DSO, taught a lot of people about DSO, so that's good. Uh, they also highlighted several apps 
Um, they talked about Diamond App, uh, Supernovas, and NFTZ. Uh, all of them underwent major revamps, major overhauls. They also mentioned Kaleido, Deso Messenger, Overclout, Musai, and Purple Creator, uh, who have recently had launches, uh, recently rolled out, at least in beta, uh, which is exciting. I think we're going to see those all being built upon in the next, in, the, in this current quarter, quarter as well as next quarter. Uh, they talked a little bit about Minted Tweets, which is it's Aditya's project. Uh, allowing users to basically tag tag the minted tweets Twitter account and get that tweet basically uh, minted on the DSO blockchain, and the and then the uh, creator of that tweet gets notified and can get uh, obviously get control of that DSO NFT. So bringing people on board. I know it's a D is working on a tipping mechanism as well, which he started to talk about a little bit this morning. But I'm excited about that. More to come on that. I'm sure we're going to talk about that a lot in the coming weeks ahead. Uh, they also talked about the coming upcoming hard fork and say, and they said that it was gonna make uh, one of the most sophisticated blockchains on web three. So that's interesting. I agree. I think that there's gonna be so much going on with blockchain. It's gonna be quite impressive. Uh, and finally, they said that user engagement metrics are definitely lower than they hoped, uh, but they said that leading indicators suggest that that's about to change. And, and I think we're seeing a lot of things uh, that are pointing to kind of a res resurgence in new users and hopefully some people coming back. Yeah, it's all, it's all good news for the most part. And, you know, it's good to see DSO growing. It's good to see them kind of put out a roadmap of what we can expect in Q2. Uh, Q1, you know, I think there were a few things that they said were going to be released in Q1 or at least implied were, such as uh, verified by association, a few other things, but you know, it's this stuff, it's like, it gets pushed back. And we experienced that with NFTZ when we gave like deadlines, we gave hard deadlines of when things were going to be released and we pushed them back and then push them back again and push them back again. It's just, you know, you want to release a product that is good and you want to release something that's ready. So I, I mean, like, I definitely understand why they, it's hard for them to give solid dates. And I, I think on NFTZ, we're not even going to, you know, come up with solid dates for most things anymore, just because we want to have the leeway and not be pressured to just release something just to release it. Yeah. And I think it's a good thing that they kind of evolve with a new cycle. I think things like the Elon Musk uh, events that are taking place, I think they have to kind of change their timeline and scheduling based on what they should take advantage of right now. So it's a good thing that they're changing with, with kind of the news cycle, adapting, uh, can't fault them for that. Uh, but yeah, I also want to talk about William Laurent. Uh, obviously, he is uh, an editor at Blockster, which is a really great publication. Um, but he interviewed the Design Sisters uh, about their story app. And it was a really, a really great, intriguing article. Uh, if you haven't read it, just check out William Laurent's profile and he has a link to it. But uh, he did a really good job and, and really kind of pulled some information that we haven't heard yet out of the design the sisters uh, and what they're doing with story along with Raval. And a, a few of the highlights, um, they're basically, they said that they're building AR features into the app, uh, which is augmented reality features, and that they're really excited about that. It's basically what they're most excited about. So we're going to see augmented reality in a DSO app. That's pretty incredible if you ask me. Um, they're also incorporating gamification into story so that when creators pass certain levels of content sharing, they can earn uh, story tokens. So I don't know if they're going to be using DAOs or if they're going to be giving creator coin away. I guess we're going to find out. But I love that they're going to be gamifying it because I, I think that's what's going to get people excited. Um, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, and, and finally, there's no date yet for the release. I know everybody's been talking about story and like, when's it coming? Them along with Pearl, I think they, I think we've all been kind of waiting for. But they said there's no date. Stay tuned to the Discord. More information's coming. Uh, I know they're working really hard, uh, heads down, along with Rabal. So I'm excited. And William did a great job. If you don't check, if you haven't checked Bloxer out, definitely check it out. He has consistently great articles and interviews with people within the. Uh, within the crypto space. Yeah, and you know, I think they're following that same road where they don't want really, to really give a release date yet because they don't know exactly how things are gonna go. You wanna time your release correctly with the crypto market sometimes. I don't know if Story really wants to do that, but some apps obviously do. 
And they, you know, you have to see, I, I know they're like one of those apps that are kind of expanding their ideas and, and what they're going to do as they go along. And as you know, they get new ideas. So I love what they're doing. I think it's going to be a really exciting app. I think it's going to have a lot of potential to bring some of the Instagram crowd over to DSO. So I, I can't wait. And I know that's why everybody wants to date is because nobody, others can't wait either. So we'll get it soon yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. I think they have to kind of adapt to what's happening. Like, like, like DSO is doing, adapt to the current events. And DSO has thrown out some new features like DAOs. Uh, they've... They've obviously the creator coins have kind of slowed down a bit. So I'm guessing they're adapting and, and coming up with new ideas. Uh, so I, I think it's a good thing. Uh, if we have to wait for a more perfected app, I think that's definitely not a negative. Yeah, and in all other news, Mossified yesterday said that Salil Sethi of Open Prosper is helping him with endpoints in order to add the Open Prosper hashtags to Diamond. Uh, I assume this is probably going to take place at the top all-time creators, or maybe there'll be a, a way to change between them. But I think it's, it's going to be a really cool feature you have on Diamond, where you can just see the top hashtags, make posts about the top hashtags, click the top hashtags, and be redirected to the posts that include those hashtags. I, I love the idea, and you know, it's a little stuff you got this started on Open Prosper, but I think it's going to move its way to Diamond. Yeah, and I, I think that if we're going to be a uh, a a really well utilized social blockchain in the future, we need hashtags. Hashtags are like the lifeblood of social media, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So also yesterday, Natter said that he's going to quote unquote seed a DAO when DAO DAO launches and it's gonna be for a long form DSO such as similar to medium.com. So I think I, I like this idea. So if you're a writer, you can make a post basically to your DSO account, but it would be to a medium.com like node where you can publish that article. People can diamond you for that article. Maybe even you could say only creator, people who own my creator coin can read that article. I think there's a lot of potential there. Oh yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and I, I think that Natter also pointed out that there are, there were some other applications that tried to do similar things, but uh, they just aren't uh, where he'd like them to be. So he's going to see it out. Uh, I like the fact that something like Medium could be kind of brought under DSO. So uh, exciting for sure. What was that project by Ali Alexander? Wasn't that similar to this? Uh, like way back in the early Big Cloud days. Yeah, uh, maybe he can reply, but yeah, like it was members or something. What, what's that? Was it clout members or something? Yeah, so, so oh, that was like a member-based site where you could have longer form posts. So it's a slightly different, whereas Medium would be more of a, I think, open, open uh, reading. So you wouldn't have like a paywall behind it. But it, it's kind of a similar idea. And obviously, clout members is kind of like faded in, into the background. Maybe he'll come back and, and reignite it and bring it back. We'll see. But uh, so... But, so what is, so the actual articles, would they be on the blockchain? I'm guessing not because you only have a certain amount of characters. Well, you have a certain amount of characters, but you could do it in by, by making threads. Okay. Yeah. So just thread them. And then on the page, it could just show the threads as a single, single article. That's, a, that's how I see it. Yeah. That's an interesting idea for sure. Yeah. So also Mark Cuban, uh, he kind of got involved in the Elon Musk discussion quite a bit yesterday, uh, kind of su giving suggestions of what Elon's trying to do and what it means for social media. But he brought up something that we've heard a lot about over the last couple of months, particularly in the last like three or four weeks, and that's a DAO for, to buy Twitter. And he suggested that a de decentralized group of supporters create a DAO, uh, buy <clears throat> Twitter with it, and then the, then the DAO coin holders uh, would then be able to vote for what's trending, who gets verified, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> it, this is exactly what Natter talked about probably for about two months now, going back to that first Octane Fund meeting we had about two months ago where he started talking about Dow Dow and their plans to maybe launch their own DAOs. So it just shows again, like how far ahead of the curve Natter is. And, and we are as kind of these, first people on the this decentralized social blockchain 
Now, is, so is Dow Dow going to be too late to the game? I, you know, I, I don't think so. I, I mean, Dow Dow's probably about a month away. Um, I, I don't think anybody's going to be able to get a ton of traction in that month to create something. And tw- Elon might buy Twitter before then anyway, so we don't, we don't really know. Um, I, I think that regardless, uh, if something does spring up a Dow to buy Twitter, I don't think it necessarily means that Dow Dow can't do something similar. Maybe, maybe the Diso Foundation should start advertising the takeover down now so that they're ahead of the curve in case somebody Maybe. does, you know, like get a bunch of publicity to us. So what, as soon as Dow Dow launches, takeover Dow is ready to, you know, take in Dow holders. So the, the only, the whole decentralization thing though. So feasibly you could have a Dow that raises money to buy, let's say Twitter. And they're raising, let's say $50 billion right? A lot of money for sure. So let's say Elon Musk comes in and says, okay, I'm going to throw $26 billion to this Dow. And then the rest of it's filled up with people spending between, you know, a penny and, and right. a million dollars. Is it really decentralized? Because doesn't Elon Musk still own more than 50% of, it? you know, like, yeah, I feel like there has to be some sort of like limit to the amount of yeah. Dow quit that any individual can own, but then that's going to limit the amount of money you can raise. So but but uh, additionally, like, how do you prevent somebody from owning more than a certain amount? Because it's all anonymous and you can create as many accounts as you want to buy into the DAO. So it, it's tough. Uh, that's a good point. Okay. So, so here's another question. What if a foreign government, let's say, let's say the Russian government decides they want to control American social media or the world's social media. And this takeover DAO launches and Russia says, okay, let's create a million different fake accounts or thousands of different fake accounts and just buy up the DAO so that we have control of it and that we can influence social media and make all these decisions that people in America, people in, in uh, Western Europe are going to see on social media. And then we can kind of control the news cycle. We can kind of control what, what's in their heads. So there's still dangers to this. And I think there needs to be protections put in place if there was to be a DAO that was going to eventually take over Twitter. You know, yeah, how do you and, and stuff like that? I don't know what the solution would be because there'd be ways around, I think, most kind of cap limits. And I, I agree. Like, I, I think like the prize possession of any government would be to control a major social media platform so that they can kind of manipulate the conversation. Um, but I think that if it's all open source, then you're going to see that they're manipulating it. So it might not be that big of a problem after all. If it's all open source, but how do you know who's controlling what account? If they can, if every DAO holder can be anonymous and if every person posting on the site is, can essentially be anonymous. You can't. Right, really... but, 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 but what I'm saying is that the, the algorithms would be open source. So you'd see what the mechanics are behind things. So if things do get manipulated, you'd be able to hopefully track it somehow. Uh, because it would be all open data, open source, open everything. Yeah, but I, I think there needs to be something put in place. Like maybe you don't let anonymous people buy the, buy the DAO. Maybe you need to have like, I don't want to say KYC, but some sort of verification that you are who you are. Yeah, I, it, it's just tough. In the crypto space, doing something like that might be suicide. All right, let's move on. Uh, Zordon had something you say yesterday. Yeah, so there's a discussion in the uh, Chainsurf Discord uh, yesterday, uh, primarily about having a mobile app um, and notifications on Diamond slash Deso. And, and Zordon, Zordon chimed in and he said that they definitely considered a mobile app for Diamond, but the problem is that Apple would take a 30% ch- upcharge on Diamonding, on purchases of creator coins. So it would really kind of uh, put a put a wall in front of people. So he, he didn't say that he, they're not going to create a mobile app, but he kind of brushed that idea aside for now. He did say that they're working or considering working on a diamond slash DSO notifier app that would basically push notifications to people uh, that would direct to the diamond site or whatever site they, they're using. Um, something like that is important. I think we definitely need like push notifications. Like I want to get a push notification on my phone saying, Hey, this person replied, you know? So like 
I'm glad that Zordon is looking at these, these things. I think that since it is Web3 and that things are so different than Web2, there are going to be obstacles, but I think we can overcome those obstacles in various different ways. Yeah, and, and that's a problem with Apple too. You know, they take such huge cuts, but I mean, that's why they're one of the more most valuable companies in the world. Or are they? They are the most valuable company, right? I believe so. so. You know, there's issues with that too, and it's issues that we, I think developers can try and work around. Right. So, what were the top hashtags of the last twenty four hours? Yep. Number one was DSO. Number two, NFT. Number three, a new one, Overclout, which is, of course, Don Hardman's node, which is doing great things. Number four was Web3. And number five was Art. Very cool. Congratulations, Overclout. Yeah. Uh, so the top earners over the last 24 hours, some interesting numbers. Uh, in total, $1,808 was earned by 1,362 creators. The number of creators is up pretty significantly over the last week. Uh, even more significantly over the last like two to three weeks. Uh, the amount earned is down quite a bit, but I think that's mostly because Dow Dow didn't sell too many NFTs yesterday. Seven creators earned at least one D, so that's, that's down pretty cons quite considerably, I'd say. Uh, and one creator earned 10 D, so and that creator was Seals, which is, they're doing amazing things. Uh, they're creating a Dow, doing lots of stuff, so keep an eye on Seals. So Seals was actually the number one earner, uh, supplanting Dow Dow for the day. Uh, I think this is like the third time in a month, maybe that Dow Dow wasn't number one. Uh, and then after Dow Dow was Unicat, ZN Mead, Clout Punk, LSA Fold, CH0K1, Swaths, Alpha, and It's Aditya, who we spoke about a bit earlier and is doing some pretty amazing things. Yeah. And we want to welcome somebody back to Open to open. Ah, we want to welcome somebody back to DSO. Thanks to Open Prosper's welcome back page. Carol Baskin is back after 30. Welcome days. back. She had been gone from the platform for 39 days, as has her big cat rescue. They were gone for a similar amount of time, but she actually came back to post about how they how she's teamed up with the Fort Myers Mighty Muscle baseball team for a fundraiser. And it's funny because Brian and I live in Fort Myers and we go to those games sometimes. Uh, so Carol's teamed up with uh, the baseball team to sell some special uh, Big Cat Rescue baseball jerseys. And the money is of course going to help Big Cat Rescue and help big cats all over the place. And it's funny because Carol Baskin, I actually helped onboard Carol Baskin on duty. So way back, I don't know, in the very beginning of BitCloud, um, we were in a clubhouse room and she came in. She's, she's actually pretty big on clubhouse, came in and was wondering, hey, what are you guys talking about? She's really into crypto and you know technology and stuff. And she's like, oh, I want to get on this. But she had so many questions how to sign up. So I'm like, hey, Carol, just we'll go in a private room and I'll ex walk you through signing up to BitCloud. So we did that. I got her signed up. I told her, you know, okay, buy a little bit of your coin, do the same for Big Cat Rescue. I think she also had another account like for her or son or daughter, I, I forget, but she set all those up and she's been fairly active since the start. At, uh, she makes posts, Big Cat Rescue makes posts. They've raised money for the Big Cat Rescue through BitCloud slash DSO. So she's, she's really an OG and I, I commend her for her efforts. Yeah, it's funny. She posted about Fort Myers. Uh, we literally lived like 15 minutes away from the, uh, the Mighty Muscles Stadium, which is a minor league team for the Twins. Um, Maybe we'll have to check out, go to that game that she's actually throwing out the first pitch, I think, right? Yeah, I believe so. And it, it, it's also the Springs, uh, uh, the, uh, I'm, I can't talk to you. I have a really bad cold. The Minnesota Twins spring training site. So they, they, they're there in spring training and then the Mighty Muscles take over once they leave. But it, so it's a good, uh, good call. So definitely check that out. And community events today, there's actually four of them. Uh, it's a busy day today at 11 a.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse. Is DSO Week in Review with DSO Chats, Miss Katie Ann and Michelle Lord. Uh, Brian's there giving all the weekly updates. If you've missed these videos, you can catch up on most of that news simply by attending the Clubhouse room at 11 a.m. Eastern time. At 3 p.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse is the Pathfinders bi-weekly meetup. Uh, that's for Astro Nation. Of course, that's with Kanchi, Slava, DOZ, Rhubarb, Spunk Art, GDS, BitBoss, JVig, French Connector, Jody Bozart, Infrared Artist, Diso Ghost, Clarid Wigs, Debo M, Elendez, Miss Katie Ann, Michelle Lord, 
Hindsight Profit, Tobias Schmidt, Wildography, and more. There's a lot of names there, but that's going to be a big room. All those people are really into the Astro Nation uh, Pathfinder. Uh, it's like a metaverse, which is really cool, built on top of DSO. That's at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And at 4.45 p.m. Eastern time on connect.club is the Gooseys prevents the egg hunt, the first annual inaugural wild goose chase, volume one. So you can win an NFT. You're going to be able to win a Gooseys NFT or a Desomon NFT. Uh, this room is going to feature Gooseys, Rhubarb, Miss Katie Ann, Michelle Lord, Zorin, by Schmidt, French Connector, Lisa Jane, Clay Oglesby, and Wildography. Then at 6 p.m. Eastern time, that room was at 4.45 p.m. Eastern time. At 6 p.m. Eastern time on connect.club. There's the Bermuda Island Survival by Extinct. I'm not really sure what that is, but Extinct does some amazing things. Sounds so fun. <laughs> definitely check it out on connect.club at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And I think that's all the news we have for today. And we will talk to you tomorrow.